If I were to ask the average American a simple question, who performed better on the economic front, Biden or Trump? The majority would likely favor Trump because the average person, the very sort of middle person during the Trump presidency probably felt that their, um, their general condition increased over the course of his time in office. It also becomes obvious when we look at public polls and surveys. According to an Ipsos-ABC News survey, 88% of American citizens consider the economy their top priority. This means both presidential candidates will need to convince the public that they can deliver on the economic front. Democrats are not in a good position here. The survey also found that 46% of U.S. voters trust Trump with the economy and 32% prefer Biden who was the Democratic candidate then. Meanwhile, another survey conducted by YouGov found an even bigger discrepancy. 47% of Americans support Trump's economic policies, and only 26% support Biden's. However, if we look at the statistics, GDP numbers, job growth, manufacturing, stock market performance, wages, and other traditional economic measures, Biden has outperformed Trump. In October 2022, Bloomberg Economics, and later Deutsche Bank, predicted a 100% chance of a recession within a year. But that did not happen. Under the Biden administration, the U.S. economy not only avoided a recession but also emerged as the fastest-growing economy among G7 countries. Although Biden withdrew from the presidential race due to poor performance in the presidential debate and following backlash, why do American voters think Biden is not good enough to handle the economy? Let's try to understand how the U.S. economy performed under Biden and Trump from Jessica Underwood, a final-year PhD student at the University of Warwick studying international political economy. We conducted her interview before Biden's withdrawal from the presidential race so she might mention Biden as a Democratic candidate. When we think of the economy, we tend to think of this one thing, but GDP is just an expression of all of our sort of gross production. Uh, but in reality, the economy is made up of lots of things. It's made up of housing. It's made up of childcare. It's made up of, um, of how much we pay for bananas. All we talk about the average person. And it may be, for example, that they've seen their fundamentals that they're spending money on increase quite significantly. For Americans, spending money on your petrol is a really big part of your expenses. And so all of these things might shape how people, they experience the economy every day. So they're going to the gas station every day. They're going to the grocery store every day and they see those expenses. And for them, it feels like the economy isn't doing well. Inflation remained a significant economic issue under the Biden administration. It peaked at 9.1% in June 2022 but fell to 3% by June this year, which is still relatively high. Prices have risen 19% under the Democratic president compared to 5% under Trump at a similar point in their presidencies. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, the average price of a gallon of gasoline rose from $2.33 to $3.76 between January 2021 and May of this year. The cost of a loaf of bread increased from $1.55 to $1.97, and the price of a dozen eggs jumped from $1.47 to $2.70. Some of the factors contributing to higher inflation included COVID-19 supply chain disruptions and the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Multiple economists have opined that stimulus checks issued by Biden also contributed to inflation. Despite this, the U.S. managed to curb inflation while maintaining lower levels of unemployment and faster wage growth than other developed countries. During both the Trump and Biden eras, wages grew nominally. However, due to inflation, the real wages of U.S. workers declined overall under the Biden administration. Starting in March 2021, consumer prices began to outpace earnings. This trend began reversing in early 2023. According to U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics data, real median weekly wages fell by 2.14 percent between the start of Biden's term and the first quarter of 2024. In May this year, real wages grew 0.5 percent compared to the previous year, but they have yet to recover to the levels at the start of the Biden era. I do think that when it comes to how uh, people, you know, experience the world, they'll have an increase in their wages and they might, for that one day that they see the increase in their wages, feel very, very good. But then if they're going into the store and they're saying, 
last week I bought groceries and it cost me this much. And this week it's now costing me this much. And they're having that same experience over and over and over again every week. You're consuming quite a bit more than you're seeing changes in wages. And so you are going to have that experience of feeling like a, a sense of insecurity. Unemployment is a success story for Biden. It was 4.7% in January 2017 when Trump took office. In April 2020, unemployment reached a record high of 14.6%. It was 6.4% in January 2021 when he left office. Trump was the only modern U.S. president who left office with fewer U.S. jobs than when his term began, largely due to COVID-19 and the subsequent economic slowdown. However, even before the pandemic, job creation grew at a slower pace under the Trump administration than it has under Biden. Biden has added 15.7 million jobs during his term. In January 2023, unemployment fell to a 53-year low of 3.4%, remaining below 4% until April 2024 and at 4.1% in June this year, which is also a record low. Unemployment can be attributed to the legislation passed by Congress under the Biden administration. Under Trump, GDP increased by 5.9%, while under Biden, it has increased by 12.05%. If we adjust it for inflation, GDP growth under Biden stands at 8.4% compared to 6.8% under Trump. Average annual growth under Trump was 1.45%, whereas it has been 3.4% in Biden's first three years. Even excluding the pandemic year of 2020, the U.S. economy under Trump grew at 2.7 percent, still lagging behind the growth achieved under the Biden administration. That would suggest that Joe Biden has done a bit better. Of course, these are really difficult things to measure because Joe Biden begins his presidency in a state where the U.S. economy was doing so very, very poorly. And so he sort of has that benefit of having started from a very different position Semiconductors are the core of modern electronics, and advanced economies are striving to compete and lead in this industry. Currently, Taiwan dominates this sector, while China and the United States are attempting to gain a significant foothold. In 2021 and 2022, the U.S. Congress passed several bills, including the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act and the Chips and Science Act, to incentivize investments in semiconductors, electronics, clean energy, and related industries. As a result, the manufacturing sector experienced a record boom under President Biden, doubling since he took office in 2021. When Trump became president, domestic manufacturing stood at $107 billion. He left office with reduced real spending at $99 billion. Following the recent legislation and other policy measures, spending on manufacturing has more than doubled, reaching $213 billion in December 2023 and continuing to rise. A recent study by Brookings and MIT found that these investments are benefiting poorer U.S. regions disproportionately, with their gains being double their share. This initiative has gained bipartisan support, with many Republicans also praising it due to the boost to key businesses in their regions. Under the Trump administration, the U.S. stock market remained strong, and he often took credit for its performance. However, the stock market also set new records under Biden, rising 24% last year and achieving new highs. Trump claims this was because the stock market was projecting his victory and betting on him to win. On the other hand, financial experts attribute the growth to the Federal Reserve's interest rate policy. Both Biden and Trump faced internal and external challenges during their presidencies that significantly impacted their performance. The war in Ukraine had a massive impact, not just in terms of uh, of of obviously, you know, the uh, sort of um, uh, sanctions that had to be put in place, which changed uh, the policies between the United States and Russia in terms of the movement of money, but also in terms of how strong Europe was able to rebound from COVID has also impacted the extent to which the U.S., because those economies, even though they're not as closely related, they are still very much connected. And the ability for uh, the cost of energy going up in Europe had an impact on uh, America's ability to be able to export to one of its biggest trading partners. Midterm elections significantly impacted the performance of both presidents as they lost control of Congress. This shift in power affected their ability to pass legislation and implement their agendas effectively. 
in the first part of the Trump administration, uh, he also the Republicans also held control of the House of Representatives and the Senate and were able to pass legislation to uh, to reduce taxes uh, for Americans. And in the beginning part of the um, o Biden administration, they were able to set forth a infrastructure plan. Uh, and both of these things were obviously their efforts to have an impact on the economy. Uh, and then their ability to continue having those sorts of big projects towards the end of their presidency was complicated because they no longer had control of Congress. They were no longer able to implement those strategies. Um, so the, I think the midterm elections are worth keeping in mind. Both presidents have adopted policies to counter Chinese imports. Trump increased tariffs on Chinese products, while Biden imposed levies on Chinese electric vehicles to incentivize the local industry. Hundreds of thousands of people are without houses in the United States. According to a recent study by Harvard, some 12 million households spend half of their income on housing. Despite this, there is no clear plan from either party to address and eliminate this problem. Housing is probably an area of the market that that needs more focus and needs more um, assistance. And I think that I, uh, to some extent, I'm surprised that neither neither candidate has made this a really central aspect of their policy, because I do think that for most Americans who don't have a house, that is going to be making up a very significant part uh, of their um, uh, lived, ex uh, lived ex expenses, right, of their living expenses. Last week, Donald Trump escaped an assassination attempt, which has led to various conspiracy theories. However, Underwood believes this incident will not significantly impact the elections. She thinks that people will continue to vote based on the economy, just as they have in the past. I think that for the vast majority of Americans, for one, they don't pay a lot of attention to the news. The attempted assassination of Donald Trump, uh, it, it, it in reality, it didn't have a, a, an actual impact on the election, right? And so in terms of how Americans are thinking, how do I want to spend the next four years? That is not likely to change. But since 2004, really, Americans are always saying that the economy is going to be their top issue. And when they say the economy, I do think it's important to keep in mind that they don't always mean the exact same thing. They usually just mean, I want to feel better about my ability to supply the resources I need to live my life. We asked Underwood about the future economic policies of both parties and which one might perform better. Let's begin with Donald Trump, who has suggested that uh, that if he were elected, that he would probably be implementing some tax cuts. That will certainly be good for a percentage of the U.S. population. There will be some people who will benefit from that quite strongly. It is a very peculiar strategy in terms of inflation. We'll just be adding more money into the economy when we probably have too much money in the economy as it is. That's what inflation tends to be. Uh, Donald Trump has also suggested that he will be implementing a, um, a tariff policy and across the board tariff policy. Uh, that is very likely to translate into increased uh, consumer prices. So both of those policies seem likely to not actually deal with the problem of inflation. Biden administration has slightly been running on the policy of, well, don't elect Donald Trump, he will be worse than us. And that is not a very clear policy for exactly what it is that they intend to do. So I do think that the Biden administration could perhaps be better at communicating what its policies are going to be. The policies that seem to have actually um, uh, become more apparent uh, uh, is uh, the sort of plan to reduce um, punitive fees. As elections approach nearer, American citizens will be seeking clearer answers about the economy from both the Republican and Democratic candidates.